All right, so today I'm going to go over how to make an external battery for your camcorder. Um, I use a uh, Canon Vixia HF200. Uh, it's a great beginner camera if you're just starting out on YouTube. There's a lot of neat things about it that um, you would want as features. So one of the things you'll find with this camera, uh, it's got an external screen uh, that'll flip around so you can see what you're doing. Uh, it does support a remote control. Um, up to 32 gigabyte, possibly more. Uh, external microphone which was something I was uh, really interested in doing because my audio was all over the place initially uh, but what I did find if you're running this off a of battery it will uh, only give you a limited amount of time so what I'm going to do is create an external battery pack for this so I don't have to carry a cord around um, you can just use the battery pack that's on it uh, it's kind of hard to see back here and um, plug in an external battery uh, power source to here now here's the thing it's got an odd voltage, uh, 8.4 input voltage, and what I want to do is get a battery pack that's USB driven. So I'm going to make an adapter, and I actually bought a power supply converter that'll convert from 5 volts to 8.4 volts. And I'm showing you, how, I'm going to show you how I'm going to put all this together, so that we have a, a usable external battery pack. All right, so let me go through the materials we'll be using. I've got this uh, USB powered battery pack. Uh, it's 10,000 milliamp hours. Um, what I really like about this is that it will plug directly into the wall and you don't have to worry about an external charger. So the other thing that it has, it's got two outputs. I'll be using the one on the bottom. Uh, they're marked. One is one amp, one is two amps. A pretty nifty little package for 10,000 uh, 10, milliamp hours. So I'll be using that. Um, I've got this little power supply converter and um, basically you can uh, put just about any voltage in DC and adjust it to any voltage out. So we'll be using this to take the uh, 5 volts from the USB um, to uh, 8.4 volts that's going into the camera. We've got a little project box. Uh, we'll put the uh, entire power supply uh, converter in here. Uh, drill holes go in and out. Then I've also got a... Uh, this is a, a 3.5 millimeter and I believe the internal side is 1.5 or 1 millimeter, but uh, this is what fits in that camera. Um, I'll look up the details and I'll tell you exactly what this is. I'll put it in the comments or, or excuse me, in the description below. Um, got a USB cord. We'll be uh, cutting into this and tapping the power off of it. And last but not least, we've got some self-stick Velcro, Velcro two-sided tape and a couple of, a uh, couple of, uh, tie wraps and uh, once I get this all together you'll see how this how I'm going to use this. Alright so without any further ado let me go ahead and get started. Alright so I've got a short little stubby piece of USB cable here. Um, I don't need it to be very long it's not going a tremendous distance. So the first thing I'm going to do is strip this and I'm going to use a razor and just gently roll it and um, that's going to be the easiest way to get the sheathing off. Let's see if it'll come off. Yep. Alright, and what we have here, so I expected is some braided or stranded shielding as well as an aluminum or foil shield. So let's cut all that mess off because we don't need it. Now we'll take the foil off and underneath that there's a red and a black which is what we're concerned with and then um, there's two other wires which are data wires and we won't need this. We're, look, we're doing this strictly for power so we'll cut that off. Now before I go any further I've got a small piece of uh, shrink tubing. It's okay I've always got a wide selection of shrink tubing available. I'm going to go with a slightly larger piece. And um, we're just going to shrink that on there with my uh, trusty little cigar lighter. And it serves to protect and also to uh, keep the uh, this braided uh, sheath from unraveling. Um, so let's strip this. I've got a really fine pair of strippers here that I'm going to use. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this, these are 26 gauge. 
So I'm going to strip about a half inch off, and I'll show you why in a second. All right, I'm going to set this aside for just a second because the next step is I'm going to prepare the box. And um, to do that, I'm going to do two things. Um, I'm going to drill a hole that will accept this wire in here. Um, and on the other side, I'm going to drill a hole that is small enough to accept uh, this wire. Um, so it'll be an in and an out. Let me uh, get my little drill bits and I'll be uh, right back to get that done. So we'll start with the input side. I think I'm melting more plastic than drilling through it, but that's all right. And um, then we'll do one for the other side, a smaller size drill bit. I'm not looking for pretty, I'm looking for functional. All right, we've got that done. Now I'm gonna lay down a couple of layers of two-sided tape. And um, the reason is that there's mountain screws in there, but unfortunately the uh, the um, project box is not lined up correctly with this. Uh, if I was doing this super nice and neat, it would uh, all be lined up and screwed in. Um, I could probably get two screws in there, and uh, not really. So let's go ahead and um, get some of this uh, tape in there. I figure about three pieces, about an inch and a quarter roughly, should do it. Alright, so let's just double check, make sure that lifts it above those screw mounts. And it does, so that'll work. Alright, now, next step. Let's double these wires back on themselves. And that'll, uh, I'm not going to solder these. These have little uh, screw mounts. Some of that crap off. Get this in here. And uh, red is positive. Just remember that. And that, that applies to just about any DC circuit. Red is always positive, black is always negative. Um, or should always be. So, let's grab the input side. As you can see here, input negative, uh, excuse me, input positive, input negative. Remember, red is, red is positive. We want to test the orientation we can just temporarily plug this in and we should get some lights on the uh, turn the battery on there we go it's actually 8.46 I had played around with this and adjusted it already but we know we've got power and we know it's in there correct so let's do the other side and uh, let's work this back out I'm going to secure these with a small tie wrap which I'll do in a moment First, let's get the camera side ready. So let's set this aside. This cord's going to be a little bit on the long side. So it's probably going to be, I think, probably about four feet will give me enough um, to where it can hang on the bottom of the uh, tripod and um, reach the, uh, the camera. Actually, there's no harm in just leaving it um, its entire length. I'll just cut the end off here. Now, what we want to be careful with, the uh, camera itself is tip positive, and it's even, it's even marked on the uh, label of the camera. So what we want to make sure is identify the tip. I 
try to keep the web surface at least a little clean. The uh, side with the white stripe should be the tip, but we'll double check that. Could always be mistaken. Let's put this on uh, continuity. And uh, what we can do is uh, grab the end of this. I'm going to put one of these probes in the tip or into the tip. I may have to get a paper clip or something as an adapter. Um, yeah, it's not going to work. Well, I can always identify the outside. That'll tell me what's the tip. So, um, if I'm not mistaken, since I think this is the tip with the stripe, we should get continuity on the outer shell. All right, so tip positive. Just remember that uh, for this camera. Uh, if you don't know, don't <laughs> don't try to force anything. So let's get these twisted up, nice and tight. Let's get these bent. The reason I'm bending is it, it gives it more surface area for those little uh, screw clamps to uh, to clamp on. I made this hole a lot smaller, and uh, the reason for that is uh, these wires are a lot smaller. So let's make sure these are opened up. Alright, so remember tip positive. We know the wire um, is marked so that the stripe is the tip. And we're going to put that into the positive terminal here. That might be too much wire. Let's cut, let's cut it down a little bit. All right, let's try this again. Tip is positive. You can see this is marked out positive. It's clearly marked in and out, positive, negative. And it's ready to seat in there. Yeah, it's a little bit of a mess, but that's all right. We're getting where we want to be. So let's get that cover off the tape. Let's plug it in. There we go. Now to secure it, I'm just going to use some simple tie wraps. Put a bend in it so I can get get to it. And the reason I'm doing this, I don't want this to pull out, so that'll that'll secure it. And I'll do the same on the other side. It could be a little bit more challenging, but. Yeah, we've got some activity there. Let's see if we can 8.6 volts output. Um, this little switch will show you the input voltage from the USB. In this case from the battery, 5.01 volts. The adjustment is this potentiometer here. And uh, you really you need a really fine bladed screwdriver. So I'm going to turn this up. You can see the voltage, output voltage going up. It's not connected to anything. Um, I think it'll go up to like 30 volts, 35 volts. But I'll post the specs in the uh, in the um, description. So let's adjust this back down. There we go. I'm good with that. 8.53, 8.4 volts. Um, I'm going a little high on it only because if the output voltage from this battery should drop, which it shouldn't because it's regulated, um, I, we know we know we'll get at least the uh, minimum amount of voltage uh, required to 
to uh, drive the camera. There we go. Now, uh, as far as mounting this whole kajing, I've also changed how I'm going to do that just a little bit. Um, I wasn't too happy with the uh, with the uh, way I had it set up before. So what I'm going to do is so I'm going to actually use two pieces of uh, self-sticking Velcro. One across it sideways and one running up and down. Which will kind of run over that, but that's okay. The other one just seemed kind of flimsy to be honest with you, so I decided to go this route. Of course, we've got to make sure everything's accessible, which it is. And um, as a final touch, I'm actually going to hang it from this side. This is just this little loop's going to do nothing but basically be a hanger. So basically when we're using this, we'll just hang it from here. Um, I know this cord comes out the bottom and it's going to the camera, it's plenty long. This just makes it easier to see the uh, battery uh, charge status. We are going to do an experiment. We're going to see exactly how long we get um, battery life. Uh, I've got a uh, 32 gigabyte SSD card in the camera. Probably have to swap them out a few times. Um, hoping to get at least eight, maybe ten hours out of this, but we'll see. Let's go ahead and get this set up. So there is a little backpack battery in here. I'm going to leave that in there. I usually do, and I usually leave the camera hooked up uh, to charge. I just connected the uh, external power supply that we just built to it, and what we're going to do is zoom in on this clock there we go and um, let it run we'll come back in a few hours and see how it does I'm not going to flood you with a bunch of clock video here's the start I'll show you the end and uh, we'll draw some conclusions on how long uh, we get as far as being able to hook up that external battery pack to this camera and um, see how long it lasts all right, so I've uh, switched out the SD card a few times just because, just make sure we didn't run out, out of room on the SD card. Um, I left the uh, monitor screen on, uh, the uh, external microphone. I left everything on as if I were um, recording in real life. And um, what we've got is a little bit over eight hours. The external battery pack is completely dead. Uh, the last few remnants of this uh, were on the um, little backpack battery that's on the camera. And that's about 80%. So probably could have got another hour. Um, yeah, about an hour, I think. So we could say safely that we can get nine hours out of this. Anyway, this was a really, uh, really fun thing to do. And now I've got a battery pack. I can set it up and uh, I get eight hours worth of recording. If I want to go to the beach and just shoot eight hours worth of waves, I can do that. Or sky, clouds, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. But I know I'm not going to run out of electricity when I got this thing out in the field. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful to you if it has. Hit like, don't forget to share, and definitely don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.